number nine in the series of my video where I'm solving and explaining select problems from RTP relevant for November 2020 exam for the subject of strategic financial management for CFI. In this video, we are going to solve question number 11, which deals with the concept of forward rate agreement and calculation of forward rate of interest. If you like this video, do share it so that other students can also benefit from it. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. So without any further delay, let's begin. Let us first read the question. Two companies, ABC Limited and XYZ Limited, approach DEF Bank for PRA, that is a forward rate agreement. They want to borrow a sum of rupees 100 crores after two years for a period of one year. The bank has calculated the yield curve for both the companies as follows. Year 1, 2, 3 and the rates of interest are for XYZ. A one year borrowing would be charged at 3.86 and if it borrows for two years, the applicable rate is 4.20. And for a three year borrowing, the applicable rate is 4.48. Now we'll just prepare this interest rate table so that we can have it handy whenever we want it. So we have year XYZ and ABC and the rate of interest are one and 3 it is 3.86% 4.20% and 4.48% and for ABC it is 4.12% 5.48% and 5.78% right so these are the applicable rates so we'll just keep this handy so that we can fetch it whenever we want the difference in yield curve is due to the lower credit rating of ABC compared to XYZ. You are required to calculate the rate of interest DEF would quote under a 2 by 3 FRA. Now what does a 2 by 3 FRA mean? A 2 by 3 FRA. This means you are going to borrow after 2 years for a period of 1 year. That means if I were to draw a time scale, let us say this is year one, this is year two, and this is year three, you are going to borrow after two years. That is what is mentioned here. After two years. So you're going to borrow here. And this three, the difference between three and two is one. So you're going to borrow after two years for a period of one year. Now, <clears throat> to enable you to understand this a little more clearly, let us say if I were to borrow after three months for a period of six months, then this would be expressed as three by nine fra. Why 3 by 9? After 3 months and the difference between these two, 9 minus 3, 6, that is for 6 months. So similarly, to give you one more example, if I were to borrow after 6 months, for a period of 12 months, I will refer to that as 6 by 18 fra. That is after six months and the difference between these two, that is 12 for 12 months. Right now, in this case, they are saying two by three. See, usually FRA is expressed in terms of months. But in this question, since they have given a two by three FRA and the period which they are mentioning is in years. So we presume that it is for a borrowing after two years for a period of one year. So you are required to calculate the rate of interest DEF would quote under a two by three FRA using the company's yield information as quoted above. 
and suppose the bank offers rate guarantee for a premium of 0.1% of the amount of loan, you are required to calculate the interest payable by XYZ Limited if interest rate in two years turns out to be 4.5% and be 5.50%. So this question contains two parts. Part 1, Part 2. We'll first solve and understand the concepts related to Part 1 and then we'll solve Part 2. Now, before we start solving the problem, let us understand the logic and the mechanics of calculation of forward rate of interest. Let us say you go to a bank and tell the branch manager that you want to deposit 100 rupees for two years. Right? Now, supposing let us just assume hypothetically that the branch manager tells you that the branch is willing to pay you 10% interest for the first year and 13% interest for the second year. Which means what will be the amount that you will receive at the end of two years? That will be 100 into 1.10, which will be the interest for the first year, into 1.13. This will give us 124.30. Right. Now, remember, these rates of interest are for individual years. That is, 10% is the rate for the first year. And 13% is the rate for the second year. So let us refer to them as small r1 and this is small r2. Now, as a customer, you tell the branch manager that, look, it is not possible for me to remember these rates. Instead, why don't you tell me one single rate which I will apply for two years that is the normal way that we compound. You know, we take the calculator and we compound it for two years. So you tell the bank manager that you give me one rate, which if I compound for two years, should give me the same result as what we arrived here. Right? Now, essentially, what you are telling the branch manager to do is, you are saying 100 into some R for two years should give you the same result as 100 into 1.10, 1.13 or essentially you are saying that 100 into 1 plus R square should give me 124.30. Now, if you solve this for R, you will get 1 plus R whole square equals to 1.2430. Therefore, 1 plus R will be the square root of 1.2430. And if you solve this, you will get R equals to 11.49. Now remember, this 11.49 is what we call as single unified rate. This is the rate if you apply for two years, you will get the same result which you would have got had you applied the individual rates for the year. Now let us look at what we have done here. Essentially, what we have done here is 100 into 1 plus R whole square equals to 100 into 1 plus R1 into 1 plus R2. Now, remember, where R1 is the rate for the first year, R2 is the rate for the second year 
and this r is the unified rate for two years or let we can also refer to as r2 then extending this logic can we also write that 100 into 1 plus unified rate for three years whole q must be equal to 100 into 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 into 1 plus r3 we can do that but if you look here we already know that 100 into 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 is this so we can substitute this here by saying 100 into 1 plus r3 whole q equals to 100 into 1 plus r2 whole square into 1 plus r3. Remember, I am only substituting this value because we know that this value is equals to this. Right? Now, we can use this in a couple of ways. Let us say r1 is 14%. R2 is 15% and R3 is say 12%. Now from this, can you find out what will be the capital R3? That is, what is the rate which when applied for 3 years will give us the same result as this. We can do this by saying if I invest 1 rupee and compound it with R3 for 3 years, this should give me the same result as 1 rupee 1 plus R2 to 1 plus R3. Okay. Similarly, if I gave you R1 equals to say 9%, R2 equals to 8%, R3 equals to 10% and R4 equals to 11%. Then from this, can you find out this? Yes, we can find out 1 into 1 plus the constant rate applied for 4 times should give me the same result as 1 into 1 plus R1, 1 plus R2, 1 plus R3 and 1 plus R4. But if you look at these two figures, you already know that 1 plus R1 into 1 plus R2 into 1 plus R3 is equals to this figure. That means in this case also, we can say 1 plus R1, 1 plus R2, 1 plus R3. This whole thing is equal to 1 into 1 plus R3 whole cube into 1 plus R4 must be equal to 1 into 1 plus R4 to the power 4. Now we'll see how to use this calculation when we actually do the sum. So now let us get on to actually solving the first part of the problem. Now in the first part of the question, they have asked us to find 2 by 3 fra forward rate for x, y, z and a, b, c. Right. Now, let us first solve for x, y, z. See, I will first show you the lengthy method and then I will show you the shortcut method which the institute has used because before applying the shortcut method, we actually need to know the logic behind it. Now, understand rate for one year and rate for first year they are all the same that means now for x y z rate for first year now as far as first year is concerned the rate for one year that is r1 will be the same as the rate for the first year right so this will be equal to r1 which is 3.86%. Okay. Now, 
let us find the rate for the second year rate for second year which means we are required to find r2 now remember whatever the question has been given the question they are given r1 r2 and r3 these rates are r1 r2 and r3 right but now we have to find the rate for the second year now we know that 1 into 1 plus r2 whole square must be equal to 1 into 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 now we know that r2 is 4.20 so 1 into 1.0420 whole square equals to 1 into now we know that r1 is 3.86 percent 1.0386 into 1 plus r2 now if we solve this for r2 we will get r2 equals to 4.54 percent right similarly if we were to calculate rate for third year that is r3 now this will be 1 into 1 plus capital r3 whole cube equals to 1 into 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 into 1 plus r3 this would be 1 into 1 1.0448 whole cube is equals to 1 into now we know that r1 is 3.86 percent 1.0386 now r2 we just found out as 4.54 1.0454 into 1 plus r3 now if we solve this we get r3 equals to 5.04 percent now remember r3 is the rate of interest for the third year now if i were to draw a timeline say this is year one year two year three now remember this is r3 in effect this is the rate for the period after two years for the period of one year right and remember in the question they have asked us to find out 2 by 3 fra now 2 by 3 fra we know is nothing but the period beginning after two years for a period of one year so therefore we can say 2 by 3 fra rate is 5.04 percent now students here notice something see in this equation 1 plus r3 whole cube equals to 1 into 1 plus r1 1 plus r2 now if we notice this part of the equation we know that 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 equals to 1 plus r2 whole square which is 1.0420 which means can we write this as 1 into 1 plus r cube whole cube is equals to 1 into 1 plus r2 whole square into 1 plus r3 now 1 plus r3 whole cube we know that this is already given in the question as 1.0448 whole cube equals to now r2 is already given as 0 0.1 into 1.0420 whole square 
into 1 plus r q. If we solve this, we will still land up with 5.04. Now, Institute has used this in their solution. So you can choose whichever method you want. It is up to you. You can find out R1, R2, R3 and then solve it. Or you can use, once you have understood the logic, you are welcome to use what the Institute has done. To find, let's bring this table out here. So that it's easy for us to refer. Now we are required to find 2 by 3 fra for ABC. Now as far as 2 by 3 fra for ABC is concerned, we can very well use what we did here. That is 1 plus R3 whole cube equals to 1 into 1 plus R2 whole square into 1 plus R3. Right. So this we can write it as 1 into 1 plus R3 whole cube equals to 1 into 1 plus R2 whole square into 1 plus R3. Now this would be 1 into 1.0578 whole cube equals to 1 into 1 1.0548 whole square into 1 plus r. Now if we solve this for r3, you will get 6.38%. Right, so this is the first part of the question where we are required to answer or find out the 2 by 3 fra for both the companies. Now let's move on to the second part of the question. Now let's look at the second part. Suppose bank offers an interest rate guarantee for a premium of 0.10% of the amount of loan. You are required to calculate the interest payable by XYZ Limited if the interest rate in 2 years turns out to be 4.50% and 5.50%. Now student, this interest rate guarantee is very similar to an option where you enter into an agreement with a bank and the bank gives you a guarantee at a particular rate. So let us presume that the bank gives you a guarantee for 4%. That means if the rate of interest actually goes beyond 4%, then you shall be entitled to borrow money from the bank at 4%. But on the other hand, if the rate of interest is actually below 4%, then you can allow this interest rate guarantee to lapse and instead of borrowing from the bank, you borrow from the market at rate lower than the guarantee rate. So now this acts very much like an option, right? So supposing I purchase an interest rate guarantee at 6%. So at the time of my borrowing, if the rate of interest is above 6%, then I would go to the bank and invoke my guarantee. I'll say, boss, I had entered into a contract with you to borrow at 6%. So give me the loan at 6%. That is because the rate in the market is way above 6%. But if the rates in the market are below 6%, then I will not go to the bank. I will allow the guarantee to lapse and instead I will tend to borrow it from the market. So an interest rate guarantee allows me to cap my interest rate cost while at the same time it gives me the flexibility to take benefit of lower rates. Let us have a look at how it works. Now, in this case, we are talking about XYZ Limited. Now, obviously, for XYZ Limited, the bank will give the guarantee for year 3. Because understand, we are talking about 
if the interest rate in two years turns out to be that is at the end of two years so essentially year three will be the year for which the bank will provide the guarantee now what is the rate at which the bank will provide the guarantee remember the rate found out for year three using these three figures was 5.04 percent we found out r3 was actually 5.04 percent therefore the bank will give the guarantee at 5.04 percent right so we can just write it down since the rate of interest for the third year was 5.04 the bank will provide the interest rate guarantee at 5.04 percent right so now let us analyze in both the situations what will happen and remember to buy this guarantee xyz will have to pay a premium of 0.1 percent so let's prepare a table if the rate of interest happens to be 4.50 percent and if the rate of interest happens to be 5.50 now remember xyz has purchased the guarantee at 5.04 which means if the rate of interest actually turns out to be 4.50 then the guarantee will not be exercised so guarantee not exercised And if the rate of interest turns out to be 5.50, then the guarantee will be exercised. Now, in this case, if the guarantee is not exercised, that means what? XYZ company will borrow from the market at 4.50. So, the interest would be 100 crores into 4.50%. So, that will be 4.50 and in the second case that is at 5.50 in this case interest will be 100 into 5.04 because in this case the guarantee will be exercised right because the rate of interest is 5.50 and xyz had purchased a guarantee at 5.04 so it will go to the bank and demand the loan at 5.04 so in this case the rate of interest will be 5.04 okay but in both the case it would have paid a commission of 100 into 0.1 percent that is 0 0.10 right in which case the total cost will be 4.60 and in this case it will be 5.14 now students notice something if the actual rate of interest actually goes beyond even say 5.5 let us say it goes to 10 percent even in that case the cost of borrowing to xyz will be 5.14 only because if the rate of interest is 10 percent then the company will invoke the guarantee and will borrow at 5.04 and it has paid a commission of 0 0.10 therefore its cost will be 5.14 only but if on the other hand the rate of interest goes to say 3% then the company will not invoke the guarantee but it will borrow from the market at 3% and it has paid a commission of 0 0.1 making its cost of 3.1 so now you notice that effectively by buying the guarantee the company has put a cap on its borrowing at 5.14 that is its cost of borrowing can never go beyond 5.14 but on the lower side, it can very well reduce. So students, I hope you found this video useful in understanding the concept of forward rate agreement and how to solve problems involving forward rate agreements. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a content. That's all for today's session. Stay fit, stay healthy and cheer.